Z here from transvoicelessons.com and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the source filter model, the harmonic series, and what resonance actually is, okay? Now I'm working on a lot of videos at the moment, but I have to make this one first because it's so, so, so important. Now, first off, you have to understand that your voice is split into three parts. You have the power source, which is essentially your airflow. You have your actual source tone, which is the actual sound that your vocal folds make. You never get to hear this. And then third, the filter, which is what your body actually does to the source sound, okay? Now, we blow air up our lungs and then we open and close our vocal folds like this. Now, because of that, airflow is let through and airflow is stopped, which creates columns of air molecules vibrating through pressure, okay? Now, the source tone is actually what we call the harmonic series in acoustics. The harmonic series is one of the most beautiful and universal concepts in nature. It literally is everywhere. Every single vibrating string, every single vibrating reed, um, even an air conditioner that's like oscillating in a stable rate. Anytime something in this universe creates a periodic waveform motion, it generates the harmonic series. Now the harmonic series sounds a lot like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and sing a note here. Ah. Uh, okay, perfect. Now, this is what the overtone series looks like, okay? Each of these little lines are what we call a harmonic, or a partial, or an overtone. And each of these is a multiple of the lowest one that I sing. So I'm going to go ahead and sing a note here at 220 hertz. Ah. Now, this is 220. So, if I count up 10 of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this will be exactly at 2200 hertz, okay? Because it is the 10th harmonic, so it is 10 times the frequency of the lower one. Everything we do with our voice is just a modification of these different sounds. The last part of our voice is the filter. Now, our vocal tract is nothing but a set of tubes. In fact, if you look here, we have what's called the, the rich model. We have the, the lungs, and then we have the tracheal column. We have the larynx here, where the voice actually begins, the source starts. And then we have, finally, the pharynx area, the nasal passageway, and the oral cavity. Now, we can actually reduce this into nothing more than a set of tubes, which we should, mentally. We have the pump of the air coming up from the lungs. We have the vocal folds, which essentially open and close, allowing air to pass through or not. We have the pharynx area here. And then we have the fork off for the nose. And then we have the oral cavity. Okay? Now, our filter modifies the source. We can actually see a small model of this if I go ahead and I take this right here. And I play it. So that's me, that's me extracting the first seven or eight harmonics of the overtone series, okay? Now, essentially what I just did is what voice feminization is. You have all this extra frequency inside your voice, all these different frequencies. And depending on the length of your tube, you will bring out a different one, okay? A female voice is nothing more than a voice which has a smaller tube, and therefore higher harmonics are brought out, okay? It's very important that you understand that the source, that, that buzzing sound, is universal for everybody. Whether you are male or female or intersex, that is the sound you make, unless you have a vocal disorder, okay? Now, every other change of your voice is simply the modification of the filter that comes after it, okay? So, let's combine the source with the filter. Here is a very accurate approximation of the vocal fold source. It's the harmonic series with the amplitude of each harmonic decreasing. And for our filter, we can use this graphic equalizer. The filtering behavior of the vocal tract is identical in behavior to this equalizer.
You'll notice that as I drag this resonant point around across the different parts of the source, the sound changes, brighter or darker. This is what is occurring to create the human voice. In fact, it's fairly simple to create accurate human voices from scratch. Let's try it. So first we're gonna take a source tone and then we'll apply parts of the filter to it. First, we'll go ahead and make a male voice and now we'll make it say a few different vowels. Now let's do the same thing, but for a female voice. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how we figured out where those resonant peaks were supposed to be at. Well, the human voice is essentially a cylindrical tube with one end open and one end closed. So the vocal tract resonances manifest in a fairly predictable way. If we reduce the whole vocal tract to just one tube, the formula for finding the first vocal resonance is very simple. It's R1 equal the speed of sound over four times L. Now we can plug in length and by calculating this, we'll be able to find the first vocal tract resonance, okay? And then from there, due to the behavior of standing waves in a closed tube, such as the vocal tract, you can just multiply by odd numbers and get the next couple resonant frequencies. Previously, we made a male and female voice. So let's look at the difference of these with the two formulas outputs. If we plug the male vocal tract length average in, which is about 17.5 centimeters, we get this. Now, if we plug a female vocal tract length in, we'll plug in 14 centimeters, we get this, okay? The vocal tract length and the behavior of the vowels determines the behavior of the resonance. This highlights the most salient difference between a male and female voice. The unique configuration of space and length can be altered by the tongue, larynx height, mouth, pharyngeal constriction, whether the nose is active, lips, and other elements which cause the resonant peaks to move and shift around depending on the shape and size of the vocal tract. The reduction or addition of any geometric space within the vocal tract behaves consistently. More space and length will shift the resonances lower, which will make your voice sound darker and more masculine. Less space and length will shift the resonances higher, which will make you sound brighter and more feminine, okay? Let's take a look at some more examples of resonance in action. Let's take a look at the way vowels behave. I Let's look at the influence of the lips. And now let's look at the reduction of larynx height by raising the larynx, which creates a uniform change in resonance. E. E. Okay, good. And lastly, male versus female voice. Um, heat from fire, fire from heat. Heat from fire, fire from heat. Now, in summary, the voice is a three-part system. Power, source, and filter. The air comes up from your lungs, transferring energy, and the vocal folds open and close this energy so that you have pressure waves that move across the air molecules. And that sound of the vocal folds is the harmonic series, then which it is deformed by the tubing that you have, the tube length. Thus, in consideration of everything that I've said, the actual goal of trans voice is to eliminate as much geometric chamber space in as many places as possible in a way that is as healthy and sustainable for your body and voice in the long run as possible. By rooting and conceptualizing our voice through the lens of acoustic physics, it gives us a predictable model which allows us to alter our voice with consistency. 
Now, if you have any questions whatsoever or any interest in studying or working with me in any capacity, please feel free to email me at transvoicelessons at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you and I am so overwhelmed by the amount of feedback and support and just, I'm just, yeah, I totally can't even talk about it. So thank you so much for watching and listening and um, I hope you the best and stay tuned for my future videos. Bye-bye.